conservative countdown after a highly divisive seven month long race. The conservative party will have a new leader on Saturday. The deadline for ballots to be returned, of course, is Tuesday and already well more than half of the party's record number of 678,000 members have already voted. That's just a remarkable story in and of itself. Longtime conservative MP Pierre Polyev, of course, remains the front runner, but is there a path for anyone else? And what kind of party will emerge next week? Will it be united, divided, and what will it stand for? The Scrum is here to dig into that. Joining us today, Annie Bergeron Oliver is a CTV News parliamentary reporter. Stephanie Levitz is a Parliament Hill reporter for the Toronto Star. And our special guest this round is Conservative Party President Robert Batheson. So we're in studio together for the first time. Robert, great to have you here, even though it's virtual. Um, this is just, let's talk about the membership numbers and what it signifies, because I, I think in the last 2020 race, there was 262,000 party members. This time, um, more than 350,000 members have already voted up to 678,000. Um, what do you make of that? What does it tell you about the party right now? We've never seen this for any party in Canadian political history to have over 678,000 Canadians pay $15 to join the Conservative Party of Canada shows that Canadians are looking for change and they see the Conservative Party as the only vehicle that can change the government from the Liberals. So there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of people who are stepping up, who are coming out to vote uh, for one of the five uh, leadership candidates. And I think the message coming out of our leadership announcement on September 10th is that the Conservative Party is bigger than ever and we are poised to make the case for change to Canadians. But okay, Steph, what are you looking for? Because it hasn't exactly been the most unifying race so far. You know, Pat Brown's out. Uh, you're not sure if Jean Charest would even be able to work with uh, Pierre Polyev. What, what's your takeaway so far and what are you watching for? So I'm watching for a couple of things, Evan. I'm watching to see, as we know, the Conservative Party, they don't elect their member, their leader on a raw vote. It's a point system, and it's right. regional-based. So let's you know, watch out for what do the regional breakdowns look like for the various candidates. Does Pierre Polyev walk away, presuming he remains the front-runner, does he walk away with a decisive victory? Is there any wiggle room within the party to say, well, oh, he didn't have Quebec, and oh, no, what about Atlantic Canada? Because if he gets that decisive mandate from the party membership, a lot of the other questions that flow out of how he won this leadership race um, are answered differently. And right. it's things about how does he manage the MPs who didn't endorse him? How does he perhaps chart a path for Quebec victory? A lot of those MPs lined up behind Jean Charest. What about Leslin Lewis? That's the other thing I'm watching for a lot. Leslin Lewis came out of nowhere in the 2020 election. At one point, she surpassed some of her rivals with the popular vote. She comes from the SOCON wing of the party. She might, in fact, do better next Saturday than Jean Charest himself. And so what is that vote that she brings with her? What does that faction now represent in the party? Has it been diluted by the strength of the membership Pierre Polyev has sold? Again, can he have this decisive national victory that puts any of those questions to bed? Or does she and the voters that she brought with her still represent a faction that he's somehow going to have to manage in the months to come? What do you watch for, Amy? So I'm watching as well to see what is this victory going to look like? How big is it going to happen? Is it going to be on a first ballot, as you're talking about? Is it going to be more regional? And I think, you know, as you mentioned, if it is going to be Pierre Polyev who wins, what does this victory look like? Because a lot of people are saying that, you know, Pierre Polyev is going to end up pivoting just like leaders before him, like Aaron O'Toole did, especially on climate, like Andrew Scheer did as well. But if he comes away, for example, with a first ballot victory, maybe he doesn't have to. Maybe he won't pivot. He does have a strong brand that really started in the Harper days and you know there are people who believe that Pierre Polyev is the best person to beat Trudeau the exact way that he is in the way that he has been campaigning and given his positions in the house as well where he is very strong so I want to see what this victory looks like whoever it is and how big it is. Rob Rathis let me just go back to you it's been a pretty divisive race now all races are divisive but you know Pat Brown gets knocked out uh, you know, Pierre Polyev and Jean Charest trading insults. You're a liar, you're a liberal, you're corrupt. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Um, is there a concern that the, the divisions cannot be healed? I think when you look outside the Conservative Party of Canada, what is driving public opinion among Canadians? And that's the fact that everything is more expensive. It's the fact that our passport offices in many cases have become campgrounds. Pearson Airport is international embarrassment. And people are looking for a change in government. And the Conservative Party of Canada, after a very vigorous leadership race with a lot of strong opinions expressed, once that new leader is chosen on September 10th, the focus is going to be on 
is it time to change the government and Canadians are increasingly looking for change? And then who is the leader and the team that can replace the Liberals? Okay, so what kind of party could it be, Steph? I mean, let's assume, for the sake of argument now, hypothetically, it's a Pierre Polyev. We've seen seven months, so he's given a pretty good indication of what kind of party he, he wants and would run. What do you make of that, and, and, and what kind of party could emerge after next Saturday? But has he, though, given a good indication? I mean, that's one of the questions on the minds of a lot of people, including some of his rivals and his critics, about the policy ideas that Pierre has put out pale in comparison to the platforms, let's say, that Jean Charest put out. As a, for example, to this day, do we know whether or not Pierre Polyev believes in climate change? Do we know um, how he would reduce emissions? We don't. And so, you know, there, there are big policy agendas, I think, that are on the minds of a lot of Canadians. What would be his prescription for the ailing health care system? Would he cut the premiers another check? These are the things, you know, as Rob says, if, if the country is, is eager for change, they're going to want to know change to what. And that's, a, right. you know, Polyev, what he's going to need to do right off the bat is start building a narrative. And he's going to have to, you know, start, of course, with his economic credentials. He's really strong. But there's a lot of other things that we don't know how Pierre Polyev thinks feels would act on these issues and that's going to matter he's run a campaign he's really harnessed a lot of energy and momentum among memberships keeping up that energy and momentum for three more years which is when the next election is it's going to take a lot of work and i think that there's a lot of voters who want to know some of those answers i mean you look at the party right it's one thing to get elected as a conservative leader by a strong conservative base it's another thing to get elected in a general election those are two very different voter bases and the question is you know can pierre polyev try to convince some of the moderates that he is the party not only the leader to, to govern this party but to govern the country well we'll find out saturday i don't know how many ballots some, some are predicting a first ballot victory we'll, we'll find out where it goes rob bath and first of all, great to have you here. Uh, you're about to finish a seven-month marathon and then probably embark on another marathon. So I really appreciate you taking some of your rest day out on Labor Day weekend. So enjoy it. Thanks, Rob. Thanks so much. Looking forward to Ottawa next week.